It's not by chance that Elon Musk has a lot of enemies, and all of them are names with global influence. The reason is very simple. His rocket company SpaceX is developing at an incredible pace, capable of beating any legacy company including ULA and Boeing. Furthermore, with the trump card of Starship, Elon Musk's influence could extend beyond space travel into military and political realms. It is truly what his rivals are concerned about the most. That concern has grown since the FAA just revealed Starship's critically important point-to-point -point mission, playing an important role in enhancing international security cooperation as against China's rise. Find out everything in today's TechMap episode. But before we begin, let's subscribe to the channel to stay up to date with the latest space news. Starship's Flight 4 marks a significant milestone in SpaceX's development of its next-generation rocket. On June 6, 2024, the mission achieved its primary objectives, including a controlled splashdown in the Gulf of Mexico, representing the first successful soft landing of both the Super Heavy booster and the Starship upper stage. The achievement makes SpaceX eager to expand its testing campaign. The new plan will add one more landing site for Starship, which is in the sea off Australia's coast, and recover it on Australian territory. The launch site remains a SpaceX facility in Texas. Also, the FAA's draft environmental review of SpaceX's Starship operations unveiled the potential landing sites of Starship. Super Heavy would land on a drone ship or continue to be expended in the Gulf of Mexico. Starship could land on a drone ship, floating platform, or be expended in any of the four landing areas, the Indian Ocean, the Pacific Ocean, near Hawaii, and the Northeast Pacific Ocean, or the Southeast Pacific Ocean. This could pave the way for SpaceX's plan on the Australian coast. This initiative represents a potential expansion of Space SX's operations in the region, which aligns with broader security and military cooperation between the U.S. and Australia. To facilitate this plan, there is a need to loosen U.S. export controls on advanced space technologies destined for Australia. This adjustment is crucial for ensuring compliance with regulations governing the transfer of sensitive technologies. The discussions are taking place amid efforts to strengthen military ties between the U.S. and Australia, particularly in light of regional security concerns regarding China. The U.S. administration has been working to ease similar restrictions as part of the AUKUS Security Alliance, which includes Australia and the U.K. SpaceX's proposed plan to land and recover its Starship rocket off the coast of Australia is seen as the first phase of a potentially larger future presence for the company in the region. In the future, there could be another option, such as launching from Australian facilities or land-based booster recoveries. Historically, SpaceX tested its Falcon 9 landings at sea before transitioning to land. According to the sources, discussions are in the early stages regarding expanded possibilities. The sources also indicate that towing Starship to a nearby port on Australia's western or northern coasts after an ocean landing or barge landing would be the ideal scenario. However, this also poses some challenges due to the huge size of the rocket. Thus, more specific plans and locations are still being determined as the talks are ongoing. Starship is a two-stage rocket system developed by SpaceX, standing at 400 feet, approximately 120 meters, tall and designed to be fully reusable. It's truly an impressive size of a human-made object, and the company is even targeting to break a new record with the rocket. In a tweet posted in May, Elon Musk even highlighted that the Starship stack will probably approach roughly 140 meters, compared to the current one is 120 meters over time. Could you imagine that the future rocket will even be taller than the largest and most famous of all the Egyptian pyramids, the Great Pyramid at Giza, which stands at 137 meters? Not only challenging in scale, Starship wants to reach the limits of modern technology. The tech billionaire, Elon Musk, has frequently spoken of his desire to establish a permanent human colony on Mars in his lifetime, which he hopes to achieve before 2050. To succeed, Mr. Musk has plans to build a fleet of hundreds of Starship rockets, each capable of rapid reuse after launching as an airplane. Starship's great potential has caught the eyes of the national agency, including the Pentagon. In 2022, the U.S. Air Force awarded SpaceX a $102 million five-year contract to demonstrate technologies and capabilities to transport military cargo and humanitarian aid around the world on a heavy rocket. A Starship launch from Texas and landing off Australia could further demonstrate point-to-point -point delivery.
The choice of Starship for this project was based on optimism about SpaceX's launch speed and rocket reusability, which would dramatically change the business situation. At this point, Starship dwarfs the Air Force's C-17 cargo plane. The rocket in the first version can carry from 100 to 150 tons to LEO, suitable for carrying military cargo. C-17 also can move 100 tons, but it can't get all the way around the planet in 90 minutes as a rocket. So why don't use rockets? Furthermore, Starship is versatile as it will be modified into various variants that serve many various purposes, such as cargo or crew transport, fuel depot, satellite launch, or suborbital travel. The Air Force Research Laboratory and SpaceX have been digging through different scenarios for the use of the company's giant rocket Starship for rapid global cargo transportation. The Pentagon since the dawn of spaceflight has been intrigued by the possibility of moving supplies via rockets, but it was never technologically or economically viable. But now, with SpaceX Starship, the dream has almost come true. Nevertheless, like any ambitious project, the rocket cargo faces significant technical hurdles and questions about the safety of having rockets drop cargo and whether the economics will ever work. Just like reusable rockets were met with doubts about feasibility and cost, rocket cargo just needs time to mature. Starship is a very different animal than any rocket that has ever been built. Gary Henry, a former Boeing executive and now a SpaceX senior advisor for National Security Space Solutions, shared that rocket cargo point-to-point -point is not the reason we're building Starship. We're building Starship to get to Mars. And what we're finding is that this is a system that has profound impacts on national security. And one of them just happens to be rocket point-to-point, -point, he added. If the government wanted to buy a dedicated Starship rocket, it could, he said. But from our perspective, if you want to fully leverage the commercial attributes of a Starship or any launcher that's out there operating commercially, you want to buy it as a service. While for Starship, SpaceX only intends to add one more location. For Crew Dragon, they will completely change the spacecraft's landing site. Indeed, SpaceX is moving Crew Dragon splashdowns from the Atlantic Ocean to the West Coast, starting in 2025 after multiple space debris incidents. Crew the 9th of May be the final NASA-led ISS mission to arrive in the ocean near the U.S. East Coast aboard Crew Dragon. The change comes from the repeated issues with large chunks of debris from Dragon, trunks where the fuel and electrical supplies are held, that have repeatedly crashed down in areas ranging from Australia to North Carolina. Since the introduction of the Crew Dragon spacecraft and its cargo variant, the trunk section has been released before the deorbit burn, re-entering passively weeks to months later. SpaceX said it chose this option after the company, working with NASA, used industry standard model that predicted that the trunk would break up completely on re-entry, with no debris surviving. That has not been the case. On several occasions, sizable pieces of debris from Dragon trunks have survived re-entry and landed in Australia, Saskatchewan, and North Carolina, among other places. The debris falls caused no damage or injuries, but illustrated the risk they posed. One measure to fix that will be tasking future spacecraft after Crew-9, perhaps as soon as Crew-10, to splash down on the U.S. Pacific coast. Aside from less space junk, the Pacific coast tends to be subject to fewer instances of extreme weather and hurricanes, potentially adding more predictability for scheduling the end of crewed missions. The challenges of that approach include the use of additional propellant to do the deorbit burn while the trunk is still attached, and then figuring out how to best separate the trunk after the burn. Additionally, it does pose new problems for Dragon recovery operations. NASA gave SpaceX new requirements, starting with CRS-21 for even tighter return timelines and enhanced science capability. That's the new challenge ahead of SpaceX now and what they have been working through here this year is how they come back to the West Coast but still maintain all of what they have learned and stand up to support crews, not just cargo. This is in terms of quick handover of science payloads after splashdown. And that just about wraps it up for today's episode. Thank you, and we look forward to seeing you next time.